What do you know about your defense since that TCU game? Um, well, it's been some shuffling for sure. Um, I, I think that uh, at that time we were still trying to find ourselves a little bit. Uh, there was a stretch in that game where we were playing pretty well, you know, and then it kind of uh, kind of went sideways with, uh, you know, we lost Deuce Green, we lost Julius Brents, we lost uh, uh, Khalid Duke. We lost, you know, it just kind of became a rash of things there for a, for a minute. Um, we, we've got a veteran group of guys, and I think that they'll uh, um, they'll respond big in the big moments. You look at TCU, they're kind of unique on offense in that they can ground and pound you with Miller, or they can hit you with explosive plays. Which of those two uh, concerns you more? <laughs> well, that's a great question. Um, the, 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 they just have tremendous playmakers. Uh, tremendous playmakers at the receiver position. I think their tight ends are good playmakers. I think that the uh, quarterback obviously makes it go. Um, and, and Kendra Miller is a, a stud. you know. And I think they've found a couple other guys at that position that are playing really high level, too. So. Um, you know, it, it's a delicate balance of, of, you know, how do you keep people over the top of things and, and still uh, put enough people in there to, to turn the run down. And, and so that's that's the mix. I mean, that's going to be the chess match uh, all game long. Kendrick Miller makes it hard for one guy to tackle. How important is it for you guys to get to the ball? We didn't tackle him very well last time at all. And I think our pursuit saved us a couple of times. I think we missed more tackles in that game than maybe we missed at any other game this year. And it's uh, it's due to him, you know. It's due to him, and it's due to Max Dugan. I mean, I think that uh, he just does a really nice job of of uh, you know being patient in his runs. I don't think he rushes anything. I think he he keeps himself under control. And if you yourself are out of control, you're going to miss him because he's going to change his pace and change his level. And and uh, even when we were able to get pretty good thuds on him, I don't think we uh, played with very good technique last time in terms of running through the contact, which is something that we emphasize. I think a lot of times we ran to the contact and dove and uh, you know put her head down and missed and, and that's a recipe for disaster no matter who you're tackling. When you look at VJ Payne last week stepping in, how did you feel like he, he played play? awesome. He played really well last week and we knew he had the ability, uh, just didn't have a ton of seasoning. Um, you know, changing his position in the matter of a week was a was a thing. Um, I think the way that we teach things, we try to teach him conceptually. So I think there was a lot of carryover from what he was doing. Um, but uh, definitely a different look at it, different perspective. So what he did last week to get himself ready to play and then uh, playing well, I was so happy and proud, proud of him. He, he played his tail off. You kind of mentioned the injuries in the TC game earlier this season. Thinking back to that, when that happened, did you feel like you kind of had to dumb some stuff down or take some things away and not, maybe not, that might change this time? Not really. Um, you know, I, I, maybe some, but not, not crazy. Um, you know, we, we're, we're, we're happy that, uh, that you know, Nick Allen's in the game. We don't we don't think twice about it. Des Purnell's in the game. We don't think twice about it. Um, you know, at that time, Jacob Parrish hadn't really emerged yet. Um, but when he went in the game, we didn't skip a beat. Um, Omar Daniels. I mean, those guys understand what we're doing. Now, obviously, the, they're uh, you know, it's hard to replace a Julius Brent. It's hard to replace a Cleet Duke. It's not like you just step in and and are those guys. But it, we don't we don't feel like we're hampered in any way if we have to play other people. But the three three five. I guess life is kind of a work in progress, but you feel like it's embedded in the, what you guys do right now? I do. I, uh, I still think it, it, it needs massaging uh, from time to time. But it's, it's, um, I, I think our guys really grasp the concepts. I think they're grasping the leverage principles that come with it, and I think that's the most important thing. That was the, that was the most, you know, when you change, it's hard to explain this, but to, when you change from a four-down structure um, you know, everything's really fit orientated. You know, everything is really, you're here, you got to do it this way. And if you miss, there's just, there's very little room for error. And I think in the, in the, in this structure that we have currently, there's a little bit more freedom for guys. So things aren't quite as black and white all the time, but I think guys, and, and initially that kind of freaked those guys out. But I think as times went on, I think we've, we've started to grasp, uh, the concept of leverage rather than the concept of gaps. Of the last five games. You've become a really good second half defense, mm. but it got away from you against Texas. They have the capability of doing the same thing. Mm. You make great halftime adjustments, but now you you got to come out a little bit stronger, don't you? No doubt. Yeah, it's, it, we've started slow, um, and it's 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 our own fault. You know, I think uh, last week it was um, couldn't get off field on third down. You know, I think we had them in some third and very manageable situations for us last week and couldn't get out. Um, had a couple of penalties. Um, that kept a couple of drives going, and, and it's just uh, um, you know, we couldn't get out of our own way. I don't feel like last week uh, against uh, 
you know, West Virginia, um, you know, obviously started off with that pick six and things were kind of going well early and then it, it ended up, uh, they got a pick six and then they kind of got some momentum and same kind of deal, just um, a, a play here, whether it's a, a, a call or an error or whatever, it wasn't like we were not playing hard or unprepared to play. That's not that's not what it is. We just got to find a better way. I think teams are doing a good job of attacking us differently than maybe we um, would anticipate. Uh, maybe that's a sign of respect, I guess. But uh, uh, it, that that's part of it. And then the other part of it, we got to execute early. And I think that's especially huge against these guys. You know, same kind of deal when we played these guys last time. I thought we put ourselves in some third downs in that first series and um, had a chance to get off the field. And then next thing you know, they get a whatever it was, 70 yard pass on a, on a, you know, really a one-on-one -on -one play. And, um, you know, you, you bet that's, that's going to be a huge deal. So who, who can start this game early? They do a good job with their script right away. They, they, they uh, can flow pretty quickly uh, early. TCU takes on the persona of their quarterback. I mean, the tough, physical, tenacious. I mean, they just don't give up. But Max Duggan's completion percentage does drop under pressure a little bit. Is it hard to balance coming after him, considering the other weapons they yeah, have? You get some guys that, that you got to cover out there yeah. too. Yeah, um, it is, uh, and I think some of that's going to fall into. I think we've got some elite pass rushers. I do. I mean, I think we've got uh, more than one. I know Felix gets a lot of credit for what he does, but you know what Brendan Mott has done this year is incredible. What what Khalid does when we get him involved in it is incredible. Uh, Nate Matlack wasn't healthy the first time we played these guys. Uh, barely played, and, and uh, he's a, a dangerous person on the edge. I think we've got some guys that got to rise to that challenge, too, when we decide not to bring pressure. Looking at the All Big 12 awards, how happy were you for, for Felix to get the Outstanding. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a cool deal. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know when the last time that's happened around here. Um, maybe you guys can tell me. I don't know. That's a, it's a pretty dang, uh, pretty dang a prestigious award uh, that he got, and, and he deserves every bit of it. He just works his tail off to get to where he's at. You know, I was, I was pleased with uh, – Pleased with uh, some of those guys. I'm surprised maybe by some others. Um, but uh, I think at the end of the day, I think um, uh, our guys are, are happy with our team's success more than those individual awards. It's, it's very rare in today's college football for, uh, at least at the FPS level, to have rematches. Um, you spend some time, obviously, at the FCS level where you guys have had rematches. Mm -hmm. What goes into preparing for a rematch? Well, you gotta, you got to make sure that you have the issues fixed that, that hurt you the last time. Uh, or the last several times, if that's uh, how, it, how it plays out. Um, you always kind of go back in history to see what, uh, what had worked. You know, it's, it's not maybe about the last game. It's maybe about the last several games. I know it's a little different scenario here uh, with these guys. But, um, you know, and, and, and I think that we understand the personnel a little bit better. You know, I meticulously uh, note personnel on, on just about every guy on their offense and, and what I think at the end of the, uh, the game. And, you know whether I was right about that or wrong about that going into the game, and uh, I think that uh, you know we, we understand maybe where we where we match up better than we thought. We maybe understand a little bit better where we don't match up as well as we thought, and so hopefully we can uh, shift those matchup around and, and get us some some better uh, advantageous situations. Time for two more. Said something surprised you about the All Big Twelve awards? Were there guys you thought <laughs> deserved to be on there? Nah, I don't want to start start all that, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with some of our guys. I think they, they play their tails off. I'm not saying anybody's not deserving. I thought that was, that was awesome. I just think there's some, uh, I think we've got some, some really good guys that go under the radar a little bit. Um, you know, the Josh Hayes's and, you know, some of these guys that are really glue for us that, uh, um, man, I wouldn't trade them for anybody. Out there for Eli Huggins. Eli Huggins, same deal. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> trade. I mean, you guys couldn't give me two, Baseball cards and a pack of bubble gum for that. I, I would. I mean, he's he's something else. He's just. Um, I mean, I, and and I've, I saw the guys on the list, and they're definitely deserving. So I'm not, you know, not going down that road. But I think I think pretty proud of our guys. Real quick, F Felix, the stats haven't been the same this year. So is this award basically the coaches admitting no, the... we have to compensate so much <laughs> for this one dude? Yeah, we... he's special. I mean, he does some things, and he draws a lot of attention. And some, in some ways, his his uh, explosive ability um, helps those people around him. And so, yeah, you bet. I, you know, I, I don't know. Sometimes it's about I don't know how all this stuff works. If it's uh, stats or not stats, but there's some pretty good players that maybe don't have great stats that get a lot of things done.